So I've had the Mavic Mini 2 in my possession now for over a week and haven't been able to fly it. Until today, that is, we finally got a break in the clouds, although it was still a little bit windy, which is okay for testing. I finally got this thing out and, well, you be the judge. So admittedly, I totally screwed up and assumed that 4K would be the standard resolution of this drone. It's not. And most of these clips were shot in 1080 and then upscaled to 4K. So I was a bit disappointed in that. And of course, I'll be posting some more 4K footage in the weeks and months to come. Although the quick shots, which I love, are really awesome, do note that they are only able to be shot in 1080. I don't really know why, but do keep that in mind. Here's a few examples. So having the Mavic Mini 2 come out about a year after the Mavic Mini 1 was really a very welcome surprise. And I gotta say that I am super excited and very happy with this little drone right out of the box. I am totally confident when I say I think this is the perfect beginner drone for anybody looking to get into the drone world. It's so capable, it improves upon so many aspects of the Mavic Mini 1 that kind of made it fall a little bit short. It's not perfect and no, it's not a professional drone, but it can absolutely produce professional results. So let's talk about a few of my favorite things about the Mini 2. And these are things that set it miles ahead of the Mavic Mini 1. And again, for me, one of the best drones for a beginner. Number one is the controller and the addition of OcuSync 2. The range on this thing, the stability, the overall reliability is just incredible. I didn't have one issue out flying for several hours where the Mavic Mini 1, unfortunately, is a Wi-Fi drone, so you're gonna have some connectivity issues at anything over really 500 meters in my experience. You can get some range extenders, but this thing is absolutely rock solid. The controller is intuitive, it feels good, it's responsive. The overall drone is just better in basically every aspect. I really, for the price, for what it is, I don't think I could ask for more other than active track, I do miss the active track feature that we see in a lot of the professional drones, the more expensive drones, but you really, you can't win them all. Another thing that I'm really excited about is now we have more and better quick shots. And if you don't know what quick shots are, they're basically pre-programmed shots that you can just press the button and it's gonna do crazy things around you while tracking you actually a little bit, but uh, it's gonna give you some great, really easy cinematic footage with like, two button presses. You don't have to be a professional drone flyer. You don't really need any experience at all. And they look really great. So not only have they added a new feature called Boomerang, but they've improved the other quick shots. You have better range, more range, and more features. So the overall reliability, I find that the tracking is, is even better. They just, they look great, they perform fantastic, and it's just a great way to get some awesome looking footage really, really simply. So I'm really happy with that addition, and I think you will be too. So what about photography? One of my favorite aspects of drones in general, and this is exactly what that looks like. Here's a JPEG straight out of camera. And here's the same photo, but with a little bit of editing that I've done. But one of the awesome things about the Mavic Mini 2, although it shoots the same 12 megapixel photos as the Mavic Mini 1, we now have the ability to shoot in RAW. And what this means is we're able to pull more information out of our photos to better recover our highlights and our shadows. Overall, it's a bit more of an intensive process, but if you have the capabilities, it's usually well worth it. 
On a properly exposed image, it's really not going to make that much of a difference because the sensor is not overly huge. One tip for you, it's easier to recover shadows than it is highlights. So if you have the option, always try to underexpose a bit rather than overexpose. As you can see here, there's less noise and more detail found in the RAW photo compared to the JPEG. Here's a few more photos that I took throughout my day. Again, this one's straight out of camera, and here it is with a few edits. Don't forget that looking straight down can really give you a great perspective. I really like this one. The Mini 2 also has some new shooting modes, including panorama, ultra wide shot, and even sphere, but this one didn't really turn out properly. Still looks kind of cool though. You can also shoot in auto exposure bracketing, which can give you a nice HDR photo, although I do find that it oversaturates it a little bit. Overall for photography, I love the new additions and I can't wait to get out and shoot some more photos. So I gotta say guys, I'm really excited about this drone. I'm excited for me and I'm excited for you. If you're just getting into the drone world, if you're thinking about picking this drone up, don't even think twice. It's a great upgrade over the Mavic Mini 1. And if you're just getting into the drone world, it's an absolute no brainer. Pull the trigger. I will drop affiliate links down there for you that'll take you to where you need to go. If you did like this video and you wanna see more just like it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and join the community. If you wanna see more detailed tutorials or footage on this drone, let me know what you want to see down below as well and like always make mistakes be yourself and get out there and go fly your drone see you next time